Hi, my name is Jason Hooper from FixYourGut.com, and today I'm going to be talking about Ubiome and the scandal that just came out. Um, the FBI raided their facilities in the San Francisco Bay Area, and they found some not very good information. Um, and unfortunately, you know, the, their company started in, in 2012. And I met the founders of Ubiome at a conference, and um, I, I, you know, I, I met with with uh, Jessica Richmond and Zachary Apt, and they were they were great scientists. You know, they came from the California Institute for Quantitative Biosciences, so it's not like these were just random people off the street or didacts or anything like that. You know, they, they had good credentials and they were qualified and they offered a, a product that consumers could use to sequence their microbiome information. They, you know, wherever you could either swab a stool sample and send it to them or other parts of the body as well. And they would sequence using PCR and they would compare it to the genome library from Missouri and, um, they would, they would send you back the results. And I, th I thought it was gonna be like a 23andMe type thing where they start collecting a lot of data and do a comparative analysis. Um, but in, in 2015, they decided to go into a different direction and start targeting um, more, more of the clinical applications of it. So in, in 2012, you know, we recommended their products on Fix Your Gut um, they sent us test kits and I probably gave out, I don't know how many, uh, free test kits, you know, I gave them to coaching clients and gave them to all sorts of people. They could have their stuff sequenced and it, it was, it was interesting there. They called it gut explore, you know, their, their package. And it was basically just that it was just like, Hey, see what's in there. It, it didn't, they didn't make any claims about, you know, health conditions or how it relates to the gut. Um, and there, the data that they were providing was, was fairly low resolution, like, uh, you know, phylum group order type stuff, like not species specific, which they never got into, um, later on in 2015, they attempted to, to get the resolution all the way down to, to, uh, the genus. And they had these like claims about some sort of AI that they were dealing with to be able to do that. And, and that's sort of where at Fix Your Gut, we kind of got off the train. And um, because it was no longer a consumer product, it was more of a, a medical diagnostic. And I feel like there were better medical diagnostics available for that and just kind of letting you know, them evolve. And when they caught up, you know, um, you know, you could utilize them as a lab or whatever. But anyway, um, yeah, not, not so good uh, because uh, it turns out that uh, the stuff that they were doing wasn't entirely above board. With these emerging spaces, it leaves a lot of room for people to get in, into these areas and do some not so great things and collect a lot of money from people and maybe not offer the services. And, and sometimes it's just an FDA issue, you know, it's like the FDA just won't let us do this and, you know, just getting certified and all that stuff. And, and I understand that process, but a lot of times these companies are using the FDA as an excuse for not doing the work that they're supposed to do. And that's bad. And in season one, episode seven, I talk about cold laser therapy and LLLT low level laser therapy and how there was a company called Q laser that got into that space and scammed a bunch of people. Unfortunately, it looks like the same thing happened here with Ubiome and Ubiome got into the space and they offered what I thought was a legit service. And we used their analysis to, to do some things. And the results that we were getting back looked good at, again, at that higher, at that uh, lower resolution level, but we weren't sequencing things all the way down to the genus. But um, I guess along the way, they started raising more and more funding through crowdsourcing and through venture capital and all that stuff that I don't really understand. And they, they must have gotten caught up in, in, in the mess because they started doing things that 
that were very questionable, and I'll get into that into a second, but the shift that they made in, in 2015, when they started amplifying you know, 16S ribosomal RNA genes, um, it, it gets a lot more complicated um, using, using PCR at, at the genus level. And so how were they going to accomplish that? Because, you know, when, when you're looking at higher orders of, of bacteria, it's easier to classify at the, at the higher levels. But when you're getting down really specifically, you're looking for specific genes. And when you do a sample, there's a lot of bacteria in the gut and you're dealing with a lot of stuff. So they claim that they developed some machine learning algorithms to be able to sort through all of this specific genetic information and be able to process it. And they started offering their services to doctors. And from the information that I have, they were charging about $3,000 per test. And from what the SEC is claiming, they didn't perform all of these tests that they were using older tests or something. And, um, Others are claiming that they were provide, providing falsified information in order to possibly get more tests done and raise more money. You know, like if they indicate there's a problem with somebody and saying like, okay, well, you've got this going on here. And so they're going to get treatment and then get more tests to see if that treatment's working. And um, it doesn't look good. It looks like they were definitely in, in, engaged in fraud, according to the SEC and there were several charges that they've been brought up on. So in the onset of this transformation in 2015, it didn't appear that there was any issues. They appeared to be going about things the right way um, as, as far as you know certifications and stuff. They were getting certifications through the clinical laboratories of improvement and amenities, which is sort of some certification that you need when you're handling samples. And, and so they appeared to be on board with that. And they even got a grant from the CDC for the research that they were doing. So everything appeared to be above board and somehow they, they lost their way. In 2019, the FBI raided their facility and produced information claiming that they were billing patients for tests that were performed without their consent, and the allegations were that they were they were just um, giving them the same test over and over again, but billing them for multiple tests. And they also claimed that they were pressuring doctors to perform more tests. And that's kind of sort of the heart at, at this investigation and, and fraud issue. But, but here's the official list of charges. Conspiracy to commit wire fraud, fraud and securities fraud, one count for each defendant, punishable for up to five years. Wire fraud and aiding and embedding, 10 counts for each defendant, punishable by up to 20 years per count as the statutory maximum. Fraud in connection with the purchase and sale of securities, nine counts per defendant, also punishable by 20 years as the statutory maximum. Engaging in monetary transactions with the proceeds of specified unlawful activity. App got two counts in Richmond, four counts, which uh, was 10 years. And this is really unfortunate because it would appear that the company was doing well and they were successful. In fact, um, App and Richmond had just gotten married at that time and you know, they were, their standard of living in, increased because they were getting all this money in. But then they started to look at the personal finances for each of them and they were showing like what they were taking this investment money from and, and doing, um, especially up until this 2019 period. And that again, does not look good for the two of them. So this is according to the SEC that Richmond and App um, we're trying to conceal these dubious practices and then eventually the company Ubiome put them on administrative leave. Uh, they suspended their medical practices and eventually they entered bankruptcy. And then here we see that, and again, this is according to the SEC, we allege that Richmond and Apt touted Ubiome as a successful and fast-growing biotech pioneer 
while hiding the fact that the company's purported success depended on deceit. The SEC claims that the only reason why they were being successful is because of their backdating and um, resequencing and, and resupplying of information and not because of any new technologies that they were doing. So rather than being innovative, they were being deceitful. Um, and you know they haven't gone to trial yet. We haven't seen all the information. These are just the allegations that have come forward this week. And so we'll see kind of how that plays out in court. This week, the FBI produced a 33-page indictment. And this source right here comes uh, as part of the FBI's press release about what happened and their allegations. And the FBI basically says what I just said. You know, they started as a direct-to-consumer service. They offered Gut Explorer. Um, that would sample and analyze laboratory specimens and says they charged a uh, hundred dollars I, I think depending upon when you um, invested or i guess when you uh, if you were on there crowd sourcing or whatever like i think i remember the kits being around eighty dollars but uh, maybe they went up to a hundred dollars but in any case uh, with their new technology, they started charging $3,000, um, as stated by the FBI here. And they started getting large-scale venture capital investments. And they went into something called a Series B fundraising round uh, in order for them to make clinical versions of the test. Some people started looking at this and they're saying, wow, th this company is growing pretty fast and, and so this could be uh, too good to be true. And, you know, the, the uh, acting U.S. attorney, uh, Hines, said that, you know, innovation must exist within the boundaries of law, which, you know, I, I definitely agree with. We have to have some checks and balances here. And, and once they started entering into that medical space, you know, there were bound by regulation. And I guess what, what the uh, analysis of Heinz is, is that they were trying to grow the company so fast that the actual technology and research was lagging behind sort of the marketing and the, you know, the, the, the investment capital and, you know, just trying to get lots of money into the company. And they were just kind of doing things and, and maybe fixing them later. It's like, let's present to the public like we're, growing in this area and making all of these technological revolutions. And then once we get enough money, we'll actually start doing that. We'll have the money to be able to come up with that technology. So again, is this what actually happened? We'll have to see in court. These are just allegations and you know, they're again, they're innocent until proven guilty, but it certainly doesn't look good for them. And if proven guilty, you know, going through all that, the list of charges, they could be going to jail for a long time. So here we have uh, the United States Postal Inspection Services because, you know, anytime they're sending samples over the mail, it becomes, uh, it beca and crossing state boundaries, it becomes a different sort of issue. So they interviewed Nunez and, and basically what he says is, uh, you know, if, if you engage in deceptive practices over a long enough period of time, eventually you're gonna get caught and that's what happened. So they go on to describe what they call fraudulent practices with their tests. Um, the FBI got involved and they just went through a lot of records and stuff. And, and again, it doesn't look very good. So um, number one, it looks like that they were fraudulently submitting reimbursement claims for retests or resequencing of archived samples. So it's, it's like billing the customer twice for the same test performed. Um, or, or at the, in this case, the customers could be insurance companies, and, and that's not good. And number two, it says that they were utilizing a, a captive network of doctors and other healthcare providers who fraudulently were given partial and misleading information about the test. And so possibly they weren't being truthful with the, the doctors or the network of doctors that they were uh, building in order to run these tests, they were claiming that the test was something that it wasn't and kind of duping the doctors. And, and I think this is really a bad thing because we don't want doctors to be gun shy about doing microbiome sequencing because we think that could actually help people 
get better if they're if they're sick. And so th this kind of creates a black eye in, in our industry. So number three, um, they were allegedly submitting reimbursement claims with respect to tests that had not been validated under the applicable federal standards. Um, so basically some regulation requirements weren't being met. Number four, manipulating the date of services. And, and this is what multiple sources are, are claiming is that they were backdating things. And, and this has been the claim from multiple sources is that they were backdating information and uh, changing, you know, changing the dates on things to make it look legit. So that, that's definitely not good. Number five, fraudulently not charging patients for patient responsibilities required by insurance. And instead, in some cases, incentivizing them with gift cards and then making false or misleading statements about or concealing those practices from insurance providers. So they were billing insurance companies for things that the patients, again, again allegedly, uh, that the patients should have been responsible for covering or uh, they were providing tests and then doing some like quid pro quo and offering gift cards for other services and stuff in order to get that insurance company um, payout. Number six, falsifying documents using the identity of doctors and other healthcare providers without their knowledge or authorization and lying to insurance providers in response to requests for information, overpayment notifications, requests for recoupment of billings, denials of reimbursement requests, or audits of investigating UIM's billing practices. The incident alleges that between 2015 and 2019, UBIOM submitted more than 300 million in reimbursement claims to private and public health insurers. Of these reimbursement claims, UBIOM was paid more than 30 million. And according to the SEC, it was actually 60 million. So between the FBI and the SEC, you know, the there seems to be some disagreement, um, in, you know, in the amount of $25 million about how, how much uh, they were on the take for this and how much they were responsible for. So the, the sixth part of the claim indicates that they were, like, I guess, forging doctor signatures or, or, or claiming that they um, ordered tests that the doctors didn't order and were billing the insurance companies for them. And, and possibly even not performing them in the first place. So basically, in summary, we have three major problems. Number, the problem number one is that the company's technology was growing faster than our medical infrastructure could verify. So were these tests accurate? Do they work? Are they, are they good for to be used and um, so they, they kind of outgrew the infrastructure. That's the first problem. The, the second problem is we, we really don't know if their machine learning and algorithms actually worked and probably will never know um, because you know we can't, we can't really test it now that they're bankrupt and they're out of commission. So we, we won't even know if the services, the legit services that they were providing in the 2015 to 2019 era were, were accurate at all. Um, and and then, then the third issue they had was what appears to be um, a, a lot of uh, basically a, a money grab, just getting money from, from insurance companies, from patients, from doctors, where the tests weren't being performed allegedly, or they were performing tests that weren't requested, um, you know, 300 million worth of, uh, of claims, um, just, I guess, as, as possibly a motivation to just raise a lot of capital. And so what do I think? Well, I'm, I'm gonna be curious to see what evidence comes out in court. Um, even if there is a trial that they'll, they'll probably plea, maybe we'll never un understand the answer to this, but I think um, a lot of people get into this get into things with the best of intentions. And the path to hell is paved with good intentions, as they say.
and I see two scientists that really wanted to help people and you know their hearts might have been in the right place and they wanted to grow their company and they wanted to be able to do more for people instead of just offering their gut explorer stuff they want to do more diagnostic things and you got to have money to be able to do that and so possibly what happened here is that they raised money through nefarious means um, in the hopes that they could use that money to improve their technology to where they could actually start offering legitimate products and advancing that space. Unfortunately, what's going to happen as a result of this is that microbiome testing is probably going to be scrutinized for the next decade and companies that are looking into doing these tests that aren't already available, you know, like your hydrogen breath tests for H. pylori and that type of thing, you know, tests that are already FDA approved people are probably going to be a lot more skeptical when it comes to new companies and new services that are coming out surrounding gut health. Um, this might be a good thing because, you know, we don't really need any more fraud in this, in this space, but I think that the areas of gut health, as far as, especially as far as diagnostic services are not even close to where they need to be to get people the right kind of help, you know, because we have a host of symptoms that we can go from to try to diagnose, but it would be good to have some lab confirmation to confirm the symptoms. And when those things are working in tandem, then we can advance the field. And unfortunately, new and advanced lab services are probably going to be held back probably for the next 10 years as a result of this. So, you know, good intentions maybe, maybe got off the path along the way, but ultimately, you know, we're all going to suffer as a result of this. I don't really see anything good that's going to come out of this for anybody. Um, and it's, it's just really sad. So anyway, I'm going to conclude here. And, um, you know, just more reason to be skeptical anytime you're dealing with any, anything in the health and wellness space, you know, a new supplement company that makes a new claim or a new consumer medical device that makes some sort of a claim. I think, um, you should really vet the people who are in charge of making it and make sure the product does what it's supposed to. And just and if it's a new product or service it's probably best to go into it with some skepticism and, and assume that it doesn't work until they prove that it does rather than assume that it works until somebody else proves that it doesn't because we're seeing more and more of this happening in the health and wellness space. You know, bunk supplements, bunk probiotics, bunk medical devices, it's just not good for anybody. So be skeptical, do the research, at FixYourGut.com, we're going to do our best to help in this area too and sort of expose, you know, some people that are operating in the space um, that are hurting people instead of helping people. So definitely go to FixYourGut.com for more information. Of course, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, this has not been a fun video to make. I'm just, I'm just really sad. Um, but hey, you don't be sad. Have a, have a great week. Cheer up. There's going to be good things along the horizon. You know, sometimes just like the Phoenix, you know, something has to be destroyed before something good can come out of it. So, you know, don't, don't become pessimistic. Stay optimistic that improvements are going to be made within the space of gut health. And I hope to report on some good news the next time. All right, we'll see you later.